Welcome everyone to the farm in Palo Alto, home to the Stanford Cardinal and to legends such as Elway, Luck, and McCaffrey, all of whom went through battles like the one we'll see in this one. There's just something about the nightcap. After a day of wall-to-wall -wall football, it just seems this is when chaos ensues. As we'll see a squad from the Big 12, the TCU Horn Frogs. Taking on a team from the ACC, the Stanford Cardinal. For EA Sports College Football, I'm Reese Davis, joined here in the booth by David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. And guys, let's get this thing started. The Horned Frogs will kick it away to start us off. From inside his own 10, he'll try to help out their field position. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team, and they stop him at the 21. So Stanford's offense is on the field for the first time today. And here he comes, a man who epitomizes the phrase, the tight end's always open, David. And yes, he is, Reese, and it's so cool. The tight end position now has evolved so much. You can move him all over the field, and you can really highlight a guy of his ability. Too big for safeties to cover and too fast for linebackers to cover. This is a weapon they've got to take advantage of. And offenses want to continue to feature the run. They want balance. Even if it's not super successful, you can take it a little bit at a time just to keep that defense honest. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. From the gun, they'll try the middle. Rumbles ahead for a pickup of five to the 29. I think that was an example of the offensive coordinator trying to help out his quarterback. He's trying to keep these third downs manageable. You know, you throw the ball on second down and it's incomplete. Now you've set up third and long, and now you're set up to fail. Third down, and they'll need two on this initial drive of the game. They'll try to pick it up on the ground. And eventually taken down, but what about that spin move? Gives him the first down yardage. And I think on that last run play on third down here early in the game, they're making a statement that we believe we're the more physical team and we're going to run the football even if you know it's coming at you. Nice job. They've got the ball at midfield. I expect to see more run plays coming up. Running back searching for a hole. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. How about the defender? being a heat-seeking missile. He was on radar lock. He found the football and flew down with some bad intentions. Lost one on that last one. It's second and 11. They want to run it left here. Slams ahead for a yard out to the 33. He's more than Third down conversions are a huge stat, and this one would be a doozy if they can pull it off. Wants to throw. It's Daniels. He looks that one in nicely. He almost picked up the first down on that one, but he'll be just a little bit short. They didn't quite get that route run deep enough to pick up the first down. Now they've got a fourth and short. And I think everybody at home tends to yell at their television set. Why aren't you getting past the first down marker? Why did you run your route short? Defense did a good job knowing where that was. But now, fourth down, offense has to make a decision. Pretty solid coverage there, and they'll stop him at the 26. So TCU's offense will take the field for the first time. Here are our impact players for this game, and it goes beyond executing an assignment to make an impact in the game. Yeah, obviously we were talking to both coaching staffs this week, and we asked them who needs to step up and play well. They immediately pointed to these guys right here. They are the key for their respective teams. Yeah, and they don't always show up in the box score, but these are the guys that are the leaders. These are the guys getting everybody organized and have to play well for their team to succeed. And the Horned Frogs want to move quickly. Pulls it and fires to the left. He's run out of bounds, but he's got enough to move the sticks. 
Nice completion here to this wide receiver. And you're going to see this receiver line up in different spots all over the field all game long. Defense has got to keep their eye on where this guy is because they know he's a big part of this offensive success. They've got it at the 37. It's first and 10. Use the play fake. Now to throw. A strike downfield. And they reacted well to the completion, but it was too late to keep them from getting the first down. I'll tell you what, that's great execution between the QB and receiver. They look like they could execute that throw in their sleep. Quarterback took his steps, threw it on time. Great route by the receiver. Nice job securing the catch. The Horned Frogs with the first and ten. Looking for space. It's Cook. And a nice run there before the defense finally makes the stop. Coaches always harp about staying ahead of the chains. And when you can run with that type of efficiency on first down, man, you are doing just that. They can really be aggressive after that last play. It's second and three. They'll go to the ground. And the Horned Frogs get enough for the first down. Well, the offense knew what they needed to get that first down, so they dial up the running play, and they get just enough to keep the drive alive. Now on first down from the 40. They'll leave it with him. And how about that interior defense stuffing the run for nothing? What a great play by the linebacker. You talk about filling a hole. Defensive line does their jobs. He comes in the hole and says, sit down, sir. Got stuffed on first down. It's second and ten. Grab behind the line. It's Richardson. Tackled immediately after the catch. This slot receiver is a guy the defense has to be careful of. He runs good routes. He's got some speed. And if you're not careful, this guy can gash you. The Horned Frogs will hustle to the line. Back to throw. It's Hoover. Makes the grab down the middle. And they finally haul him down, but not before the good catch and run. Really nice job there by the quarterback, understanding that it's zone coverage on third down. You're going to have to find someone working into a soft spot, get the ball out of your hands quickly, make an accurate throw, and pick up the first. Well done. Down to the 18-yard line. It's first and 10. They've marched to the red zone, and here they go. Throws to the wideout. Gets it into the end zone, but there's a flag down. We'll see if this one is oh, coming oh, back. Oh, we'll repeat the previous down, but this time the offense has 10 more yards it has to cover. The snap sets up the throw. And he just flat dropped it. I think he wanted to run before he secured it. That ball hit him right in a bad spot, right in the hands. Really unfortunate he didn't come down with that one. This offense has a second down play. He's looking to throw. Grab behind the line. It's Cook. He is stopped behind the line of scrimmage. They'll lose yards on that one. As they get set to snap at time, winding down here in the quarter. On third and long, doesn't need to take the check down. A little screen to the running back. There to make the tackle, and that's how we'll wrap up this first period. Defense has dominated the early part of this game, and the stats point that out emphatically.
Let's see if the offenses can find a little rhythm here in the second. And the field goal unit is on the field. Doesn't have a straight-on shot here. He'll kick it from the left hash and 39 yards out. Field goal is good. And with that, they break the seal on the scoring. It's 3-0. I'll tell you, this is not an easy place to play on the road, especially at nighttime. This crowd, they get loud. That's the way it's been so far, but they have a nice drive to open it up. They're able to execute. They put themselves in field goal range, knock it through the uprights. They did exactly what they needed to do, taking a 3-0 lead here early on the road. That's impressive. After putting three on the board, the kickoff unit ready to go. Here he comes from inside his own five. And he pops it up inside the 20. Almost a disaster on that return. They jump on it. They'll maintain possession. Stanford has it back. The Cardinal offense returning to the field. David, the putter got some work last time. They'd like to keep him on the sidelines in this drive. Yeah, it's not something you want to say very often. You don't want the punt. This offense needs to get back lathered up and get a little bit more of a rhythm. Best way to do that, identify where your best players are and just get them the football. Give these guys some touches to kickstart this offense. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. To the air, it's Daniels. Makes his connection. What well, we knew coming into this game, this offense was going to try and get this receiver involved and get him involved early. So here they are just finding an easy completion. It's not a touchdown, but they just want to get this guy lathered up and get him into a run. They'll try to move the chains on third and short from the 27. They'll try to bully their way for the first. They'll move those chains, getting it out to the 29-yard line and trying to get this drive rolling. And a lot of coaches put a lot of emphasis on situational-type running, right? When it's a goal-to-go -go situation, short yardage situation, like when I need to run the football and they know I'm running the football. Right there, I haven't had a lot of success, but I needed a few yards to get the first down. Great job by the offensive line creating some space and getting the first down. Across the 30, out to the 33, and gains four on the play. Just a simple power play, power football. Be strong, be big, be physical. Make it a fourth quarter game, make them feel you, keep them off balance. After the productive first down play, it's second and six. He's looking to throw. And he really needed to hold on to that one, but it was not loose, and third down is coming. The big tight end tries to make a catch, and you can tell he extends for the ball, but great job by the defender getting in there, making the hit, dislodging the football out at the same time as he's going to catch it, and the big tight end couldn't hold on to it. The play-action fake. Unloads to the right. He's got it. He'll get him down, but not before he crosses the 50. He's down in the 49. And they just want to give this guy a chance to make a play on third down. And more times than not, he is going to deliver. And he's so good. So efficient. Such a good route runner. Got the speed. Got the complete game. So you definitely want to highlight him. And especially on those downs that matter the most. If something's not open quick underneath, find him. He'll make those contested catches. Good pick up on that play. It'll bring up second and four. You want to talk about making it easy for an offensive coordinator. You pick up a bunch of yards on first down, make that second down really, really manageable. That's a great job by the offense. Six-yard pickup on first down. Leaves him with second and four. Hand off to the single back. Brought down to the ground, but he has enough for the first down. And this offense is clicking, everything's moving, and the guy carrying the football, I mean, he is carrying the rock. Like, this is a guy that's he's setting this tone for this game, creating some balance on this offense. This offense is going to be a handful. 
Yeah, David, I'd love to sit here and say, well, the offensive coordinator is just one step ahead of his counterpart across the field. That's not it. Right now, his offensive line is establishing the line of scrimmage, and you mentioned the back. He right now is running with authority on this run. And he laid the lumber to stop him from getting the first down. That throw and catch, a really good example of why coaches don't want a quarterback to get stuck on a particular target, isn't it, Dave? Yep, that's exactly right. Find the guy who's open because you got so many guys that have so much speed that can do so much damage on the field. Find my matchup, get it to him. And the quarterback will be slung down back at the 43. The defense just simply not fooled by the play action. Oftentimes, as an offense, you're hoping the run fake's going to slow down those pass rushers, but man, oh man, they had their ears pinned back. And they've converted their first two third down opportunities, but a third and long is a different animal. Going to take a shot. Got it inside the 10. And he takes it all the way. They couldn't stop him. Touchdown, Stanford. You know, sometimes as a play caller, you just don't have to overthink things. I've got a guy who's faster than your guys, and he's just going to run straight down the field. I'm going to throw it way down the field. He's going to make the catch, and we're going to score a touchdown. And that's pretty much what just happened there. They'll try to add another to their lead. And the extra point is good, and it's a four-point lead. Almost ready to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. From inside his own 10, let's see what he gets. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. TCU will send its offense back onto the field. Jesse, they had to kick a field goal the last time they had it. Yeah, and oftentimes early in games, you're just trying to find your rhythm. Some things work, some don't on that first drive, David. It'd be interesting to see what happens here on the second drive. Yeah, you got a feel for the defense now. You understand what they're trying to do, what their game plan is. Now you get to go into phase two of your game plan. And the Horned Frogs are in the hurry up. Looking for space. It's Cook. That's what you expect from a senior. Don't give them any extra yards. Great tackle there. We've reached the two-minute warning, and we have ourselves a ball game, and they have a chance to take the lead here before the half. Second down coming up. To throw. It's Hoover getting some heat. And they got him for the sack. And that's just a simple blitz by the middle linebacker, and he's able to win up front, seize the gap, he's able to beat his block and get to the QB. This is a third and long. football with the run and sure tackling there to keep him from getting to the first down marker i'm out called here by the defense it's their first of the half the horned frogs send up the punt unit signals for the fair catch and that's where they'll put it in play just outside the 20. The Stanford offense making its way back onto the field. Using the quick game. And he's knocked down immediately, but a good pickup on that play. My old coach said, you'll never go broke taking a profit. Take what's there, take the positive yards, and never complain. 
still some work to do after that last completion at second down. He's looking to throw. Fires left. Makes a connection. They'll get it to the 48. No need to measure it to first down. And you see so many smart wide receivers, so many smart tight ends nowadays that they know where the holes in those zones are, and they work with their quarterback, and they find them, and they sit down in them and make big plays. It's tough to sit back in zone against such smart players nowadays. Works the middle of the field. They get him on the ground at the 37, but give him 15 yards on that chunk play, and they'll move the chains. And this has got to be so demoralizing for this defense right now, having given up multiple first downs on this drive. Somebody on defense has to step up, make a play, and stop the bleed. Stanford going back to work with another first down. And it's incomplete. If you're going to take a hit like that, you might as well hang on to the ball. Not seeing a lot of chemistry between the QB and his intended target on that play. Back to the line after the incompletion. Second and 10 from the 37. Trying play action. Pocket starts to collapse. That pressure got to him, and he just had to chuck it out of bounds. This drive was clicking along, but after a couple of misfires, threatening to stall out on third and ten. To the air, it's Daniels. Fires to the wideout. Makes the grab. And it's a fumble after that huge game. They recover their own fumble. How in the world did the offense avoid that disaster? And it looks as if they've buzzed down. Replay wants to have another peek at that last play. So the officials take a closer look and the replay booth will overturn the call. They'll throw it on first down. And good coverage and better hands by the defender to knock it down in the end zone. And that's just a huge missed opportunity on offense. QB missed his guy wide open in the end zone. You might not get another clean look like that in the rest of this game. Running out of time here in the first half. They're going to have to be efficient to put some points on the board before the break. On second down, he'll try to make the connection. Got his man quickly. And he might be known for one pitch, but that was a sure and heavy tackle on the tight end. They'll use a timeout right before halftime. Maybe time for one or two more plays. And it's third down, but they're going to go ahead and try the field goal and try to get points before the break. Never a doubt. going to the locker room and they'll need to finish off these final few seconds and not allow them to answer. Prime inside the 10. Here he comes. And the returner will be knocked down. First half in the books. Time now to join Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Thanks, fellas. Looks like you've had a very enjoyable day there today in Palo Alto. And there is no better place to start this halftime than by reviewing how this wideout has been a one-man wrecking crew. The kid's been everywhere. And I love how he's willing to go across the middle, but that he also has the Jets to burn these DBs on the deep ball. If this defense wants to actually come back in this one, they better hide his cleats. With that said, let's send it back to the guys on the farm. Stanford set to boot it deep to start this second half. Returner will field it and try to get some field position. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes and they'll stop him at the 16. TCU has it back and the Horned Frogs go on offense. 
They'll start this third quarter with a run. The sledding has been tough. Scores have been at a premium, Jesse, and every possession seems like it could switch the momentum of the game. Yeah, Reese, for this offense, just feels like they just haven't been as physical. And for this offensive coordinator, David, he's having to go deep into the playbook just to try to generate a first down. Well, and the good thing is there's not a ton of game pressure because the other side's not scoring either. But if you can find that one thing that get that one positive play and then maybe you get those juices going and something can start to build. Finds his way for three after the 33. And sticking to the run. I'll tell you what, a lot of teams that are really good are really stubborn, and they continue to run the football even with little success. So this offense is going to continue to focus on running the football, you can tell. And the Horned Frogs come to the line in the hurry-up. On the ground, it's Cook. Finding a way to put that foot in the ground and get it up to the 37-yard line. I think you run that play so you stay out of third and long. Third and long is not where an offense ever wants to thrive. Third and medium? Hey, I'm good with that. So you run that play to make sure you're set up for a good third down. After the strong run on second down, third down coming. Do they do it again? They'll stick to the ground looking for the marker. Turns it on in midfield. Good pick up there as he gets the first down, and they'll mark him at the 48. Well, you wonder if one of the adjustments they made at halftime trailing in this game was to try and get the ground game established, David, and they're off to a good start here. Dang right. Stay patient. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to press. Just try to get scoring drives together. Don't abandon the run. Off the play fake on first down. Unloads to the wideout. How about getting the foot down on that throw for the big completion? When you're going to run a comeback route, you've got to sell like you're going deep. And that was a great job there by the receiver, really making that corner think he was running deep down the field. So he got the corner to turn his hips, turn his shoulders, and then the receiver was able to just pivot around and make it an easy pass and catch. Looking to throw, it's Hoover. Gets it out fast. Finally run out of bounds, but he has this offense rolling with a first down. This is why you recruit dudes, right? Quarterback <laughs> distributes, get the ball in the hands of playmakers, and let him do his thing. That dude makes quarterback look good. I mean, you get it to him in space, and watch. He'll break the tackles. He'll make those plays. But nice job getting the ball out fast to his playmaker and letting him do the rest. Reads it. Fires complete. And the defense had that one well covered, just a short game there. I love offenses and quarterbacks that are willing to take the easy stuff. Take those easy throws that are guaranteed to get positive yards. Yeah, I'm going to take big shots down the field, too. But don't forget, it's easier to pick up second and five, third and five, than it is when we start getting those long yardage situations. Here's the handoff. Pushes ahead for two to the seven-yard line. Not a lot of ground to cover and not much to defend. A big third down in the red zone. From the gun, wants to pass. Fires to the end zone. And he's got it. Touchdown, Horn Frog. And the defense just has to do a better job in coverage in that situation. Down close to the goal line, you know it's going to be man coverage. You just have got to do a better job sticking on your guy. And the defender just simply got beat. They'll try to tack one more on their score. And the extra point was good. No incident there, and we are tied up in the third. So a scoring drive there of 83 yards, and they close the deal with the seven-yarder for the score. All tied up and just about set to kick it away. 
He'll bring it back from inside his five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. Stanford has it back. The Cardinal offense returning to the field. Off the play fake on first down, wants to throw. And he was hit just as he was releasing the pass, and it falls to the ground incomplete. Another incompletion, and I've said that a lot, and these teams are just struggling. I mean, the offense just doesn't know what to do. Nothing's working, ground game, throw game. It's kind of been a rock fight on both sides. On second down, he'll try to make the connection this time. Gets it out quickly. Crosses the 30, he's got a lane. All kinds of running room. The 30, past the 20. Touchdown, Cardinal! And with that one, they jump on top here in the second half. When you have so many playmakers on offense like they do, they can score quickly. <laughs> you just saw it right there. Lining up for the PAT. And the extra point is true, and they're on top by seven. Well, they didn't exactly milk the clock on that drive, did they? Two plays and into the end zone for the touchdown. The kickoff team on the field as they'll send this one away. He'll bring it out. It's Palmer. Not nearly as much as he'd hoped when he brought it out of the end zone. He'll be stopped at the 15. TCU will send its offense back onto the field. Snags it quickly on the left. He's run out of bounds, but a big play on that one, and it'll be a first down. Well, we see another catch by this guy. This defense is going to need to do a better job of tackling the catch. In coverage, I know they want to slap the ball away, but if you can't do it and force the incompletion, you've got to at least make sure you're able to drag him down to the ground as soon as he catches the ball. Looking for a crease. It's Cook. Defense in the right spot. They stop him after a gain of two to the 28. And the defense doing a great job committing to the run. When you commit to the run like this, obviously you can give up some plays in the passing game, but you got to stop the run first. The Horned Frogs headed quickly to the line. Looking for a man. It's Hoover. Throws to the wideout. And they'll spot it at the 45. That's good enough for a first down. And the Horned Frogs come to the line with a new set of downs. Off the play fake on first down to throw. Got him downfield. And they'll finally catch up to him, but not before a big chunk of yardage is picked up. They've done a really good job creating the matchups they want out of the spot. Yeah, dude, get that guy matched up on a linebacker. That guy matched up on a safety. Keep him away from the corners by putting him in the slot. Get him the football. Let him make plays. Give to the back. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. They're trying to run the football. There's just nowhere to go for the ball carrier inside. He tried to bounce it to the outside. That linebacker way too fast. He met him there and forced the TFL. After losing yardage, it's second and 12.
The give to the running back from the shotgun. They finally get him on the ground, but the big running play moves to change for the first down. This running back loves running into the teeth of the defense. In between the tackles, he keeps a low pad level, and he's got some speed. Time winding down in the quarter as they come to the line. From the gun, give on the inside. And they get him on the ground, and that'll probably do it for the third quarter. Big catches, big plays, tons of yards through three quarters for these two guys. Not only is the scoreboard on their side, but so too is time as we open the fourth. They've got him looking wrong, but they're going to throw it. He got his hands on it, but couldn't hold on to it. And what a time that would have been for their first pick of the game. Ooh, quarterback lucky that one wasn't picked. You got to be really careful down here in the red zone because these windows are small and defenders close on the ball. That one should have been an INT. Boy, they love to move the sticks here and take a shot at it on first and goal. He's got it on the run. They get him down, but this offense is set up first and goal from the nine. So nice when you're in offense and you get in these third and shorts and you know the defense has to be aggressive, has to commit guys up front, especially in the red zone area. Nice job by this offense, slipping in the pass, getting rid of the football, setting up a first and goal. Keeping it on the ground on first and goal. And he'll finish the run in the end zone. Touchdown, TCU! And this running back is so dangerous down close to the end zone. He's got wiggle, he's got great vision and burst, and he showed all of those attributes right there. PAT unit on the field. And the extra point was good, and we are all tied up in the fourth. So a drive there of 85 yards, and what a way to finish it with a nine-yard touchdown run. Here comes the kickoff as we are all tied up in the fourth quarter. On the move from inside his five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. The Stanford offense making its way back onto the field. After standing on the sideline and watching that long touchdown drive, they really need to put something together to give their defense a rest. And that's a real thing, man. Like, you played a lot of plays, you get worn out. You need a chance to go decompress on the sideline, get some oxygen. Palmer, now it's on this offense. Yeah, this is the definition of complementary football because it's a two-pronged problem. You've got to score points and answer, but you've also got to take your time and give your defense an opportunity to get their win. He'll do it himself. That may not look like a huge run, but they'll take it as it gets him up to the 24. Well, not much the defense could do there. The defensive end crashed down thinking the running back had it, but nice job of the ball handling there by the QB. Just trying to avoid negative plays, continue to put stress on the defense. That's what he does there. And that's a play this guy can run in his sleep, too. They rep this over and over and over. It's like clockwork for this guy. Got it in the middle. It's Bachmeyer. Nice job to get it past the sticks, and they get him down at the 35. Wow, and what a great job by that quarterback, finding his open receiver on third down. You know, guys, one of the most telling stats at the end of the game is third down conversion percentage. If you're a great third down team, it's invaluable to your offensive success, and that's why teams drill third down so much in practice. Coming out on first down with the play fake. He'll take a deep shot here. And the physical play there forces the incompletion on first down. After the misconnection, it's second down. 
leaves it with the back. And they try the middle of this defense, and that is not happening. That back had absolutely nowhere to run the football. Actually, is he counting? I think he's counting to make sure there's only 11 guys on defense. They line up with some serious work to do if they want to convert this one. Looking to throw, it's Daniels. Throws to the back. And they'll miss the connection here on third down. That's why it's so important for this defense to win first and second down. You set up third and longs like that. You can show your exotic looks. You can get the pass rush going. Everybody in the back end expecting throw. And that's how you force incompletions and force fourth downs. Stanford lines up to punt it away. They'll look to pin him deep. They'll get down and put a stop to the return at about the 28-yard line. TCU has it back in the Horned Frogs go on offense. How big is this drive? Scored a touchdown the last time they had it. Defense gets a stop, and now it's up to them in a tie game. All right, so if you're the offensive coordinator here, let's dial it in. Who are your best matchups and best playmakers to take advantage of this golden opportunity? Yeah, and I'm interested to see this defense, too. Like, the momentum is clearly not in your favor. How do you get it back? How do you make a big play? Do you be more aggressive here to try to get the football back to your offense? Here's the give off the left side. That DB had a different story. He had something to say. Coming up, making a physical tackle. Now this offense facing a third and long from their own 30. From the gun, wants to pass. And this is going to be incomplete on third. It's so nice when you know it's third and long, you know a pass is coming, you worked on it all week, get your feet set at the sticks, understand that quarterback's got to be rushed, get him off of his spot. Nice execution by this defense. The Horned Frogs will call on their punt team. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. They're able to put a stop to that return right at the 30-yard line. Stanford has it back. The Cardinal offense returning to the field. That last drive won't go on the highlight reel after ending in a punt. They'd like to be more productive this time, David. And I think this offense has to be a little bit more balanced. Find a little balance between the run, Jesse, and working in that pass. And I think, too, David, it's just going to take a spark. It just takes one play to get this thing picked up and going. Picked up two yards on that last one. They need eight on second down. From the gun, they'll try to impose their will. Not a lot of daylight. He gets one to the 32. They line up, and it is a long way to the sticks from here. Off the play fake. Got it in the middle, it's Bachmeyer. And he was off to the races, and he gets it to the 45. There's a reason third down is called the money man. What a great find by the quarterback. Great job finding his receiver. Uh, at the end of the game, you look at third down percentages, it tells a huge story, and it goes a long way in deciding who wins a football game. First down here with time for maybe one more play until the two-minute warning. Motion from the offense. They go to the ground, and he's a real nowhere man tackled in this no-game land. Kept it on the ground on first down, see if they stick with that plan on second. Looking to throw, it's Daniels. Works the middle. Slips one guy, and now he's loose. And the catch was one thing, and the run even better. A big pickup on that one. And I love when you understand when I'm supposed to put some RPMs on that football. You can tell he's thrown over the middle of the field. He knows he's got defenders there. I got to throw this thing in there quick, fast, in a hurry. Nice job by the quarterback. Stanford gets set to snap it on first down.
the give to the tailback. Really nice stop there from this senior leader. Timeout called by the defense. It's their first of the half as they'll make some adjustments. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. Leaves it with the back. And maybe they want to try somewhere else because there is nothing doing in the middle of this defense. Defense going to use a timeout. Can't afford to have any confusion on the call here. They're trying to find some room off right tackle. And he was loose and in the open field and on his way. A tremendous pickup on that one. Guys, this is the kind of finish we hope for. High game. Offense with a chance to grab the lead in the waning moments. And the defense makes the tackle, but not before. He gets down to the two. It's all tied up. This offensive line, they want the pressure. They want everything to go through them here. They're saying, look, let's just run the ball. Let's get this thing down closer and closer to the goal line. Let's bleed some clock and put ourselves in a position to win. They've moved it forward to the two. Now it's second and goal. Touch pass on the jet sweep. What a job up front, and he'll lose a yard on that one. Got to give the defense credit. Watching film, anticipating. They knew that this offense had this play in their back pocket. They knew about the speed of this wide receiver and different ways they were going to try to get him involved. Everybody on defense on the same page playing together. I love it. They believe in their running game on third and goal here. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. And decision time coming for this offense. How about the defense? They've hung in there, Palmer, made him earn it all the way down. Now, are you going to go for it on fourth down? Yeah, you know, after running so many plays offensively on the drive, I know it'd be disappointing to only walk away with a field goal, but you'd feel even worse if you went for a touchdown and didn't get it. I think you kick it right here. It's good. Celebration erupts on the sideline as they take the lead in the final second. It is a nerve-wracking feeling as a football player when the game comes down to your kicker, and he has to come through, and Palmer, he comes through with flying colors. And you know in college football, no field goal is automatic, but there's no college kicker situation here. He drills that right through the uprights, and David, it looks like his team's getting the dub. That last field goal gave them a three-point lead. Now to see if they can cover the kickoff and keep them out of field goal range. He'll bring it out from inside his own 10. Good job by the coverage unit to stop the return man. 